You've been lied to, my friends. You do not need to be perfect. You do not need CMA, to- CMA, open up. Who? The Canadian Medical Association. Hey everyone, Aesan Yavari here. I am a first year incoming medical student at McMaster University. And today I wanted to talk about medical school admissions and how you can get into medical school and the reality surrounding it. Now, the holy trinity, as I like to call it, which is the perfect GPA, the amazing ECs, and the great CARS and CASPER score, that isn't really that true at all. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need all of these fantastic things to get into medical school. So what is the truth then? The reality is we've been shifting from this mindset of GPA and CASPER and CARS more towards the extracurricular activities and more what the person brings as a potential medical student. And I'll get to all of these in a second. But let's talk about my story. How did I get into medical school? Well, I was your typical pre-med going, walking in to my first class. I majored in kinesiology at York University. By the way, York University has the best kinesiology program, not a sponsor. You should definitely consider it. Anyways, <clears throat> I was in my first class and sat down minding my own business when the professor randomly says, oh, by the way, I know a lot of pre-meds take this course. Uh, you should probably stop thinking about medicine. It's very competitive and most of you probably won't make it. That's, you shouldn't be saying that to potential pre-meds. And I think you, tend to get into this mindset as a pre-medical student that this is an impossible achievement or this is an impossible feat to do. How do you get in? How is it that people, they must be crazy, they must have all of these wonderful things and the answer really isn't. For me personally, I focused on two things on, in my undergrad. I focused on my GPA and I focused on trying to get a good car score. At the end of the day, what happened was that I ended up with a 4.0 GPA and a 128 CAR score on my MCAT. So I want you to now think how many interviews I got in Ontario, and I only applied in Ontario. I got two. I got two interviews out of uh, the five potential schools in Ontario, and those were Ottawa, and McMaster. And I'm very thankful that I even got those interviews. And what you find out is that I spent all my time on GPA and Casper and CARS, but I didn't have that many ECs. I, in fact, I, I lacked a lot of ECs in that regard, but I still managed to get these interviews and I managed to eventually get accepted into McMaster University. So my point here is, you don't need crazy ECs, but at the same time, if you have really good ECs, you don't need a good GPA. There are things that compensate for each other, and we're gonna get into that right now. I want to talk about the Trinity, of course, GPA, CARS, CASPER, your ECs, also talking about research, is it necessary? And let's get into it. So, GPA, mm -mm -mm, that. Everybody talks about that GPA. Now, I'm gonna be quite frank, you don't need a fantastic GPA. In fact, Queen's University looks at the GPA as a cutoff. Western also looks at the GPA as a cutoff. U of T, while people applying have really high GPAs, that's only because A, everyone applying, including me, most likely took full course loads. So U of T allows you to basically drop two courses per year of your school if you took full course loads throughout your school year and this inflates the GPA. And B, uh, at the same time, a lot of the competitiveness and a lot of the decisions on in getting interviews in U of T is decided based off of the ABS, so the autobiographical sketch that you do during your application, as well as the extracurricular activities that you have. So it's not really about the GPA for U of T even, which has such a high GPA. The only two schools that I'd say have really high GPA requirements that are actually make you more competitive are Ottawa and McMaster, those two. And really, if you don't have a great GPA or you're trying to get a better GPA, make sure to watch my video 
on how I managed to get a 4.0 GPA on my channel or on the card, wherever it is on the screen. But if you do have a low GPA and you've already graduated, that's not an issue. Now is the time to work on your ECs, your Casper, and your cars. Make sure you do really well on all of those, and you have fantastic chances in Queens, Western, uh, UFT, and even McMaster. Ottawa is very hard just because of the GPA requirement, but any of those schools, you have fantastic chances. Now, really, though, I have to say, GPA, while it is de-emphasized in my opinion, and you shouldn't really go crazy in getting a crazy GPA. The GPA is still important and GPA is permanent. You can go through your whole uh, undergrad degree and get a really good GPA, but if you mess it up, well, that's permanent. And if you are volunteering and you find that you are you're getting a lower GPA, lower marks, worse marks, then just lower your commitments because at the end of the day, you can always volunteer after you graduate, but it's much harder to increase your GPA at the same time. Now let's move on to cars and Casper. What about those? And cars even, before it used to be such a major aspect of your application, if you had a high car score, you were practically guaranteed admission because you would get an interview at Western at McMaster. But for example, I had a 128, so I qualified both for Western and McMaster. Now, even though I met the cutoff for Western, I didn't get an interview. Because Western has now shifted towards a model where they are valuing your experiences and your extracurricular activities rather than these objective statistics. Once again, through my, throughout my four-year undergrad degree, this wasn't the case. Before when I started, it was all about the GPA cars. And really with that, you could get Western, uh, uh, Ottawa, and McMaster, and maybe even U of T. But now it's completely flipped where we are looking mainly at your extracurriculars. But I would still say, make sure you get a fantastic car score. Try your best to get a good car score. Well, once again, if you don't, it's not the end of the day. In at Western at the moment, I believe the cutoff was 127 for this cycle. So it keeps going down per year. So if you are trying to go for Western, don't worry. I think as the years goes on, the car score might even go down as well as it's been doing for the past two years. The key is make sure you do well enough, but don't go crazy. You don't need a 132. You, uh, a 128 is good for all of the medical schools. And if you have a lower GPA, obviously try to get a higher car score to compensate. In terms of Casper, this is very important for both McMaster and Ottawa you should be trying your best to getting the best Casper score. You shouldn't take Casper lightly. And I have a video on how to do well on Casper uh, on my channel as well. Make sure to check that out. But Casper is extremely important because Ottawa, I believe it's a big portion of your pre-interview score. As well, it's a huge portion of your McMaster score. It's over one third of your score in getting an interview. So definitely try your best to do well on Casper. But let's move on to the most important one, in my opinion, and the most important section of your application, which is your extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities are very important at the moment. And you might be asking yourself, what do you mean by this? Really, whether you're writing essays for U of T, whether you're in an interview talking about your experiences, all of these settings require you to draw from these experiences, why you wanna do medicine, why you wanna do this, how you've helped others, all of these require you to have some background, some experiences. And that's where extracurricular experiences are the key. And this is really the gold mine for your admissions. Now I have to say that if you have a lower GPA, your ECs are your golden ticket to getting an interview. Once again, just the medical school admission system has changed to a degree where it helps everyone in Ontario specifically. If you're a GPA person like me, who spend most of their time on their GPA and their MCAT and more uh, of those academically inclined uh, aspects, then you can you have chances at both McMaster and Ottawa and even U of T. But if you're the other way around, you are benefited by the, uh, the chance of getting into U of T, uh, Queens and Western. And so, how do you know what to what ECs to go for? 
And my answer to this is very simple. Do what you enjoy. You've probably heard this, but trust me, do what you enjoy. Do what you find interesting. And the reason for this is that when you find something interesting, genuinely interesting, when you do this, you have the ability to volunteer and get involved in different ways that will lead you to gain stories, unique experiences that no other person will have because you were so involved. And when you get to this point, that's where you get those stories. That's when you fill those can med roles, stuff such as leader, uh, scholar, etc. That's how you get those roles. And you should definitely have a long-term track for your ECs. Try to get started early on your ECs. But if you find that it's causing your GPA to fall or anything else, cut back on it. You don't need to go crazy. My point here is you don't need to do everything. Just do one thing at a time and make sure it's perfect or make sure it's good before you move on to the next. If you do a bunch of things at once, you'll just go crazy. Now, at the same time, I have to say that you should also partake in employment. That's something I really, really did not do. Employment is really good as well. It's something that they look for on your application and you're getting money, you're working, you might as well. And I would definitely recommend every summer uh, that after your courses are done, do a part-time job or try to do a part-time job throughout the year. Either way, get started on these early. And if you find that it's lowering your GPA, then move on and try to cut back on these. Next, is research necessary? And I just have to say, everyone, please do not do research if, you do not, if you're not interested in it. It's, it will not help your application. Really, it won't. Unless it's, you've gained something amazing out of it that will literally connect to medicine. If you find it not interesting, don't do it. I did research because I found research interesting. Now, you don't want to waste a uh, professor's time teaching you all of these techniques and then you end up ditching them because you're a pre-med. Please don't do this. Only enter in research if you enjoy it. And there are so many valuable experiences you can get out of research and it is very interesting. And I would definitely recommend for you to volunteer in labs and see how it is. But be cautious. If you are not interested, then do not waste your time or your PI's time. Uh, at the end of the day, research isn't necessary for getting into medical school. Don't think of it as a check mark, but think of it as an opportunity to increase your learning. And I have to get to the last point, which is references. For, me for medical school in Ontario, you need really good references. That's just a fact. So my, what you should be doing throughout your undergrad, and I would start this very early on, is make connections with professors, go to their office hours if you're interested in these people, obviously, or, and make sure in anything you volunteer, you're doing these for long periods of time. So there are people who can talk about whether or not you would be a good fit in medicine. And really, the only people who know this are people who know your personality, who've been interacting with you for long periods of time. And these references are, are a very important key, for example, for U of T. On the other hand, uh, for McMaster and Ottawa, the references are not as important. Uh, for U of T, Queens and Western, your references are much more important. So once again, as you can tell, there, uh, in Ontario, if you have a bad GPA, you have a chance. If you have a good GPA but bad ECs, you have a chance. If you have a good CARS, bad GPA and bad ECs, you still have a chance. If you have bad everything, you can always work on the CARS, the CASPER and the ECs and still get in. My point is, you don't have to be perfect. You don't need to kill yourself to get into med school. You don't need to stop being social or stop doing things that uh, will ruin your life. It doesn't have to be a lifestyle. Just try your best, do what you enjoy, and focus on one thing at a time, and don't try to overburden yourself uh, when, when doing things like this. So, 
that's my advice to you. If you're someone who's non-traditional, that is, you've already graduated and your GPA wasn't the best, trust me, as a non-trad, your experiences are very valuable because I've known so many people who are, on the, are older, but they have very unique, interesting experiences that allow them to stand out in the application process. So, at the end of the day, you can make mistakes and you can always make up for these mistakes. Different universities look for different things. And with these extracurricular focus that, in my opinion, is happening with these medical schools, Everybody has a chance, and you will definitely be able to get in. Do not worry. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. This has been Ehsan. Have a nice day.